Hello students, welcome to the online class. In sixth class, we learnt about fibers, and in sixth class, we learnt that fibers can be obtained from the plants. And in this class, in seventh and third lesson, we are going to learn that how can be fibers can be obtained from the animals. And let's take some examples for the fibers can be obtained from the plants first. What are they? Cotton, jute, deccan hemp. These are some examples of plant fibers. Is yes, we can get these fibers from the plants. And remember, plant fibers have carbohydrates in it. And animal fibers they have proteins in it. Proteins in it. So, in this class, we are going to learn two animal fibers, they are silkworm and wool, how they can be obtained from the animals and what are the processes that are involved in the obtaining of these fibers from the animals. So, let us see in this class, the first one will see the silk fiber, how can be this silk fiber can be obtained from the silkworm. Even we can see here the life cycle of the silkworm and depending on this we will see how this silk fiber is obtained from the silkworm. The first stage is that moth to X. You might have seen silkworm, it looks like a uh, silk moth, it looks like a butterfly. It is a creamy in white color, yes. So, it is in creamy white color and it looks like a butterfly and it lays X around 400 to 500 x in one go and then after it dies and to collect these x farmers they place white cloth or a white sheet paper below these female silk moths to collect the x and after laying x that female moth dies because it cannot fly after the laying x and they collect the these x and remember the x of moth also called as seeds the x of moth also called as seeds and these seeds are available in the granages that means seed growing centers they are called granages and in andhra pradesh in Chittur district at Horsley Hills, we can see the a very big granite center. Yes. So, granite center a very big which is placed in the Andhra Pradesh. There farmers they collect the seeds, they buy the seeds, they come from the different places and they buy the seeds. And these seeds, uh, they use some different machines to hatch these. After hatching these seeds, caterpillar comes out from these eggs and these caterpillars at that stage they are voracious eaters they eat very excessively to feed these caterpillars farmers use mulberry leaves farmers use mulberry leaves to feed these caterpillars and this mulberry crop can be planted with just twigs of mulberry. Yes, just using the twigs we can plant the crop of mulberry. So, they provide mulberry leaves to the caterpillars. They were very small, so they cannot eat that much big leaves. So, they make it small pieces and they provide that to the caterpillars in a very big frames. And there, those caterpillars they continuously eat those leaves 30 to 45 days day and night after eating continuously 35 days they grow in size bigger and bigger when their size is growing bigger and bigger so they transform that to in cocoonage These are also in Telugu called as Chandrikalu. Kakunech, in these we can see just circle like the structures 
and they are placed in different places and these larvas when they are placed in these cocoonage they settled at one particular place and they start to secrete a substance yes that is the fiber like substance they secrete a substance to cover its body completely they move its head side by side and they cover its body completely and after 2 to 3 weeks we can see the structure of the caterpillar just like this the cocoon forms this is the stage and in telugu it is called as pattukayalu so cocoon they are also called as pattukayalu and sometimes farmers they buy these cocoons also and they will just extract the fiber from these cocoons and sometimes they boiled over and they sealed in the bags and they get sell in the markets also and this is the very important stage to get the fiber from the cocoon why i am saying this stage is very important because after formation of the cocoon the larva which is inside the cocoon it tries to come out of the cocoon and while it is trying to come out of the cocoon it makes a hole and it comes out and it flies away so before it comes out and it flies away we have to kill that inside the cocoon sir why should we kill that inside the cocoon the reason is that if you want to get the quality fiber if you want to get the quality fiber and the continuous thread of silk fiber we have to kill it and while it is coming out it spoils the cocoon it spoils the fiber so that's why we have to kill that larva inside the cocoon to kill the larva inside the cocoon we use the process called stifling so stifling process is done to kill the larva inside the cocoons and the stifling process is done in reeling centers so in reeling centers the stifling process is done and after the stifling process is done as usually i said they pack in a sealed bags and they sell in the markets and sometimes they boil over to extract the fiber and what is the next stage to obtain the fiber from this boiled cocoons is that when these cocoons are boiled the fiber becomes very soft and smooth we can obtain very easily and remember to get the continuous thread we have to locate the end point of the thread so that's why we use the boiling and while boiling this cocoon the people they point out the end point of the thread and they just reel it and then when they reel it the fiber comes out from the cocoon very smoothly and after getting that fiber from the cocoon they reel it onto the reels and from that we can see that cocoon to fiber so from the cocoon the fiber is prepared okay we got the fiber from the cocoon and what is the next step after getting fiber from the cocoon it should be cleaned because there may be dust or any other materials which are attached to the fiber so that's why it should be cleaned bleached to get the white in color and then after dyeing process also used why this dyeing process because as you can see silk fabrics are available in different designs and different varieties of colors so how how that process done because of the dyeing process in dyeing process they add colors to the fiber so and after that getting the fiber this fiber can be converted into fabric how these fibers they weaves in a horizontal and vertical manner just like this the arrangement of the fibers in horizontal and verticals they use power looms and hand looms to weave fiber into fabric and even if you observe your cloth you can see the horizontal and vertical structures on your cloth observe carefully and this vertical arrangement of the fiber is called warp and this horizontal arrangement of the fiber is called weft so in this way the farmers they use power looms and hand looms 
when you are, when you are using the hand looms we have to use the man power but in power looms they run by the power so we need not to work so much but they are expensive so after this our fabric is ready and when we got the fabric it will be designed into different varieties of and different colors and now the next one is that why this silk is very special what makes it very special is yes, it has some special characteristics that's why it becomes very special the first one is it is a natural fiber as we know that natural fibers they give comfortable and at the same time this silk is very strong why it is strong because there are proteins present in this silk what are the proteins present in this silk there are two proteins one is sericin and fibroin these are the two proteins that are present in the silk fiber so that's why it is very strong and it is very shiny and even it is elastic also and it is durable so that's why it is also expensive and why this is expensive because it has to follow the, it has to complete all the stages there are so many processes are involved to uh, to prepare the silk fabric yes so that's why and not only that the people who are involving in the handling of the silk fiber they may face some respiratory problems also yes and now let's see the story of silk how was the first silk was prepared and where it was prepared let's see just listen a story the chinese couple who were sit under a tree they were having a, a cup of tea and the cocoon was dropped from the tree in that cup of tea and the tea was very hot and when that cocoon was dropped in that cup of tea because of that boiling process just like here how this cocoon from the cocoon we can get the soft and smooth fiber because of the boiling process the tea was hot and the fiber the cocoon was big, it was loosened and when they try to take that out from the cocoon it comes out just like a fiber just like a thread they wonder how it how this fiber is coming out from the cocoon and the couple they just have gone through the life cycle of the silk worm and they understood how can be fiber silk fiber can be obtained from the silk moths and then after they established a factory and they produ their production was started and at present the two countries are producing this silk fiber major production is done in especially two countries they are china and australia remember the first silk fabric was used in china first used in china and these two countries they are producing silk fiber in a huge quantity now see we can see uh, we can understand the life cycle of the silk worm also with this diagram yes here you can see first silk moth it lays x and from that x caterpillar comes out at this stage and from that caterpillar after eating continuously it becomes larva and this larva it goes through the cocoon stage at this stage we obtain the or we extract the fiber from the cocoon and if you observe that the x of silk moth they are not look like their parents and after following certain phases they attains the shape of their parent so that means the animals are some insects when they take their birth they do not resemble their parents after completing certain stages they attain or they developed into adults this process is called metamorphosis especially frogs and the silk moths they follow this metamorphosis process so from this cocoon if we don't kill here larva inside the cocoon the next stage will be the young moth will comes out from the cocoon and after 2 to 3 days it becomes an adult moth and it flies away okay so this is the life cycle of the silk moth and next what is the importance of the silk in our country is yes, silk is very special in our country 
there are so many different varieties of silk also present here for example dharmavaram kanchipuram narayan pet kotta kota these are some famous pl popular places and some popular varieties of silk also not only these eri silk kosa silk moga silk these are some other varieties of the silk and remember in telangana pochampalli is very famous for silk fiber pochampalli is very famous for the silk fabric pochampalli it is also called as silk city of telangana remember pochampalli is also called as a silk city of telangana so dharmavaram kanchipuram narayan pet kotta kot how these names were came because these fibers they are made in that place so depending on their places these names have evolved so we can see let's take a quick recap of the today's class that is from the mouth x comes and this x they lay x 400 to 500 at a time then after it dies and from the x caterpillar comes out and then after larva stage then after we get the cocoon from the cocoon we follow the process of stifling process from this process we get the fiber remember after getting the fiber it weaves into fabric we use power looms hand looms yes to weave the fabric and even here the horizontal vertical arrangements of the fiber warp and weft what are the two proteins present in the silk fiber they are sericin and fibroin okay and the stifling process is done in reeling centers the first silk fiber is used in china and the mass production of silk fiber we can see here china and australia the other name for this cocoonage it is also called cocoonage cane frames chandrikalu in telugu we call it as a chandrikalu okay so these are all how silk fiber can be obtained from the silk mat and in our next class we'll learn how a woolen fiber can be obtained from the sheep goats and other animals we'll see in detail we'll learn in detail in our next class so till then bye and thank you